Toronto. Toronto is um, Toronto's changing, and I mean it's going through like a rough thing right now, but there's it's changing. It's good, good stuff. That's all I'm gonna say. Can't wait. Beautiful, multicultural, music loving city. It's um, a place of the sweetest and the sourest, super talented underdogs that we feel are finally getting exposed to the world and getting the recognition that they deserve. Toronto's in the middle of a cultural explosion. It's a bonanza. It's amazing. About to pop off. It's the city that uh, I believe could uh, bloom beyond its wildest dreams uh, in the right hands. Like the way we see it, uh, Toronto's undefined. No definitions means no restrictions for the most part. And obviously, multiracial girls are a crazy source of inspiration. Home. That's it, that's my answer. Toronto is home. Lilla Victoria is, <laughs> I was going to say, a frustrated artist who's just trying to express herself in any form right now. That's who she is by day. By night, that's another story. I would say that I'm thoughtful and smart, very sensitive and funny. Othello Gray is a culmination of inspiration and ambition. Like the moment when those two, those two things meet at the tipping point, like that's, that's what I would describe myself as. Stefhoff is an interdisciplinary creative with a deep affection for rap, fashion, and the internet. Harrison is a 19-year-old, almost 20, producer from Toronto, experimenting in funk and video game music and stuff. And stuff. Kid Studio is a design film studio here in Toronto. Rajini Pereira is a POC artist in Toronto. Uh, I'm also a mom and an entrepreneur. I'm self-represented and I'm just trying to hustle it out in the city, try to make some money painting. I'm self-represented. What fucking artist is self-represented? Brendan Phillip is emptying the glass, you know, so that you constantly have space. It's, it's learning to fly in real life by learning to fly in your dreams. It's kind of beyond description, you know. Brendan Phillip is God, really. But not me. Just another Filipino with a camera. <laughs> no Black No White is a playground for us to experiment, create, challenge design and stories of people starting in India, hopefully taking it to the world, and we've started off by focusing on our art. Uh, recently we just shot a video for the homie Kata Juma uh, for a single called Come Over. It was a lot of fun. All the homies went out to the beach in the middle of October. It was cold, but it was a good time. Capital, capital E. You should come over, come over to me. Um, I conceptualized uh, some events and activations for the launch of Top Shop Top Man in Richmond, BC. Oh man, I hate these questions because it's so tough. My favorite projects. Um, okay, there's a tie. I love working with Neva and Paulo. So every time we're together and we collaborate, it's just like magic, and I'm always barfing on set because it's so good. <laughs> My favorite and most recent project I've worked on would be um, just doing uh, editorial with Sean Brown of Needs and Wants, just because we have like a natural chemistry. We've been doing it for so long. It's just easy. It's fun. It's one of the best things I do naturally. It was a a short documentary about Reed Fleming, an illustrator, um, and James Hamilton and I did some music for it and sound. Maybe the black art video I did with Julian, um, we're all in experience, like broke, passionate, but pure at the same time. That's what made the video so good. I'm a 
Yeah, my favorite has to be the series I'm working on right now. It's called Africa Galactica, and uh, it's essentially a pro-female power, pro-female sexuality propaganda campaign that's pictorial. I would have to say Miracle Thieves. It was that project that really gave me a chance to be out there and to get to know my peers and, you know, tap into the Toronto creative scene. Our most favorite project would definitely have to be the Bomb Bombers. It was our first unisex collection. We got to experiment with textiles to this level, especially with the bondage and the color, and it was reversible. <laughs> Um, typical day is waking up in the morning, taking my daughter to school, have coffee, walk the dog, lots of meditation, lots of yoga, cook up a little something, I try to remember to eat, do some work at the free studio, head to like Nomad, shoot, edit, lots of reading, lots of writing, and I'll come home and make music for like the rest of the day. Generally doing a nine to five artist's business day. Uh, after that, I go and pick her up from school and I become a mom. And try and get in a good run. It's not that fun. A typical day for me is not fun. On the weekday. And on the weekends, I'm, I'm getting it. Uh, I think I'd rather not say what a typical day for me would be like. Yeah. Well, we live uh, at a spot called Acres. And uh, he lives downstairs, I live upstairs. It's, uh, it's the studio and it's rum, music, other things. One day in the middle of Kach in the village working with our artists and family to being in Toronto and doing a pop-up with our friends. A typical day for kid looks like Black Sabbath, Black mainly draw inspiration from the past. Like I look to a lot of what's been done by my favorite like designers, musicians, whoever it may be, and do my best to translate that in a new way in the present time. Well, as you can see, I have all those Nintendo games over there. I love video game sounds and music, and I love 80s, like electro funk. Oh, I ask myself this every day. I draw inspiration from everything, even things I wouldn't expect it from, but mostly music, feelings, sad, Sad panda parts. <laughs> you draw inspiration from everywhere, especially in a place like India. It's just it's sensory overload. Our senses are, are, are hidden from what we see, what we smell, what we hear. Unexpected situations, people yeah. down the street, people's colors, the weather, everything. Anime, uh, comic books, pop culture, Rajput and Mughal style miniaturism, Afrofuturism, black exploitation scientific diagrams, the visual languages of scientific diagrams, all over the place. Japanese magazines, uh, Italian horror movies, Instagram, and Tumblr. Lately from myself, lots of reflection, lots of meditation, lots of forward thinking. Artistry evolved just through a natural pursuit. I've always wanted to be better, to find out what I'm made for, like what I'm here for. So I've just always pursued that, just continuing to work hard and always looking for the best in myself. A uh, strict diet of vanity and nostalgia. We don't trust our taste. We don't lose anything. We don't fuck with personally. When our taste evolves, so does it. Strict diet of vanity and nostalgia. My artistry evolved through mentorship, um, trial and error, and through the internet as both a tool for inspiration and distribution. Finding my own style and kind of knowing who I am and like what my strengths are. Before I wanted to like shoot everything before, but now I've found like my focus and passion, so that's what I want to do. Best advice I've been given. The best advice I've been given. The best advice. <laughs> I'm gonna have to take it back a long time and
talk about my mom. She always just instilled to believe in myself and that's something that I took to heart at a really young age and have always carried with me. Stick to it, show not tell. Work smart, not hard is with my manager at No Pros when I used to work there at the time. Always be yourself. So that's really all you can do. The best advice I've been given has come from my mom, ironically or more cliche. She said to go after anything you want in life and that's what I did. I am really bad at taking advice and because I've made my own way for as long as I can remember, I, I can't think of I can't think of any advice that's been given to me that I've actually taken in the past or has applied to my life. I'm not a businessman, I'm a business man. Jay-Z. Uh, my father always told me anything worth doing is worth doing well. The best advice I've been given was to not follow trends. And that's it's something that's happened to me before. I've fallen into trends, but in the end of the day, be, just be yourself. <laughs> Yo. It'll, it'll be fine. It'll be great. The best advice I've been given is that uh, Southern Mollies is pushing it through. The advice I would give to emerging creatives is to find separation. It's so easy to become like everyone else and do what everyone else is doing, but you become the best you when you separate. <laughs> Nobody cares, bro. Dude. <laughs> Collaborate. Collaborate. Collaborate with as many people as you possibly can. Toronto's an amazing city and there's amazing creators here. And those who don't work together will drown. Don't be afraid to send an email. Use fucking YouTube. Watch fucking tutorials. I don't give a shit. But anyone says watch them, practice. Like at least put aside 20 minutes a day just for anything you do because it practice it makes it makes perfect. Practice makes perfect. Impress yourself, impress your mom, and all your friends with moms. Just stick to your vision and protect it with all your heart. Do what you gotta do to protect it. Keep creating. Let go. Surround yourself with people who encourage you and make you better. Count your blessings. Just work with what you got. Um, and also, just be patient. Like, everything that's meant for you will happen. Don't watch the crowd. Don't watch the crowd and what they're doing. Do your thing. Become good at what you're good at. There's nothing romantic about being a starving artist. Imagine yourself as a creative entrepreneur. I would say to just spend time with yourself. Really get to know yourself. Ask yourself lots of questions. Dig really deep and bring up stuff that perhaps you don't even know exists and, you know, keep it real. Prod is amazing because it has this beautiful community vibe, um, but it's taking your art form from Toronto and it's taking it to a global platform not having to do it the other way around. I think it's a shame, but you have to almost leave the city to get outside validation and then come back to be respected. In terms of the arts, it feels like you're kind of boxed in. You could easily become trapped here. The city's just not big enough to maintain a really, really powerful cultural industry, but we're getting there. The money's coming. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna release. I don't know my plans for the future. <laughs> You'll have to wait and see. Those are my plans for the future. I do know what my plans are, but you're gonna have to wait. But yeah. Keep making art. The sun sets and the sun rises, howling at the moon. Keep making art that gives a space and a voice to the others, to the marginalized, to the outsiders. Making outside culture, inside culture. I don't know what my journey is going to be like in between, but I just want to live on an island with long, glittery hair, be wrinkly, and make ice cream on an island. That's it. 